As this is Mobin, we are talking about the respiratory system pathology. The lecture now is the lung abscesses. This is a common pathology in many, many diseases. So, it is important to understand what the lung abscesses are, what are the causes of the abscesses and then what are the complications of the abscesses and how do you clinically see an abscess. So, let us see. First of all, the causes of the abscesses. Aspiration is the most important cause and very, very uh, in the in the young patients. In the elderly, the most important ca cause is carcinomas or cancers. Now, aspiration could be for two reasons. One is the surgical procedures in which nasal or the oral flora may be pushed into the lung during the intubations or just simply when the patient is under anesthesia. Then the aspiration can be from the gastric uh, contents that can be aspirated and that is very common in patients who are one alcoholics and then patients who have epilepsy or patients who are who have some neuronal damage or nervous system damage that causes the gag reflexes to be uh, suppressed or miscoordinated. Also aspiration of the gastric content can occur in the uh, malnourished and debilitated patients who have generally the reflexes are, are suppressed in them or the re reflexes are less, um, less efficient and their content can be aspirated. Aspiration happens in the healthy patients as well, but normally that does that is taken care of very easily. So now aspiration uh, brings in the oral flora in the lungs and in that flora the, the ones that are dangerous are staph. Uh, Staph aureus is dangerous, Klebsiella is dangerous, Pseudomonas is dangerous and so on. So that these are the oral flora which Haemophilus influenza which when they go to the lung they can cause uh, aspiration, aspiration pneumonia and that can cause then the lung abscesses. Similarly, the gastric content, the acids from the gastric content when they would go in the lungs as well they can cause irritation and cause local necrosis and tissue damage. So, we will talk about that pathology in a second over here. Let us look at the, uh, the causes first. Then bacterial pneumonia, so that is a normal thing we have talked about it many times. In the bacterial pneumonia, of course, the staph aureus is more dangerous compared to strep pneumoniae and also mycobacterium tuberculosis, then uh, fungi of various kind can also cause aspiration, uh, sorry, uh, abscess. Bronchial obstruction is very important, so what happens is when a part of the airway is obstructed, the distal part can then become converted into a, an abscess and over here the fluid and we have discussed this in, in length at length in the atelectasis and such diseases. So, distal part becomes filled with the fluid and that can become an abscess. There can be secondary infections that can become um, you know housed in this area and the destruction can occur and so this becomes an abscess. Another thing which is important in elderly is that if the and uh, for elderly if you see a elderly patient who has fluid air, air fluid levels in the x-ray or who has an abscess that you can see in the x-ray suspect or consider carcinoma as well it is important. So, in the elderly the carcinoma can obstruct the pathway and when that obstructs the pathway the fragments of the the fragments of the tumor and the bleeding can fill the distal part and that can also become an abscess. Then uh, ejected tumors so that is very important especially in the case of carcinomas and in the case of diseases that cause granuloma formation. So, for example, mycobacterium tuberculosis causing the granuloma or caseating granuloma and diseases or pathologies that cause necrosis. So, what happens is this, let us look at it. Let us say there is the patient, this patient has myco, uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis infection, so TB. So, that would cause, let us say here a granuloma is formed. You know that the granuloma has a center 
most of the granuloma in immune competent patient with the tuberculosis. I'm not talking about immune compromise. They, they have a central caseating area of necrosis, so cheese like area, caseous mean cheese like. So, why is this cheese like? Because there are fatty acids that have accumulated here because of the cell debris or the cell death in this area. And then outside of that, there are epithelioid cells which are actually macrophages and histiocytes that look like epithelial cells. They are elongated pink color cells. And then there are of course mononuclear cells, lymphocytes, histiocytes, macrophages that are sitting here. And as discussed in tuberculosis, there are going to be giant cells as well which are fused cells mostly macrophages and histiocytes that have become fused and these are called the giant cells. So, with this granuloma, one of the complication of the granuloma is that as it grows, this granuloma is going to rupture in the airway. So, when it ruptures in the airway, so the first question, what are the conditions where it is more common to rupture? So, secondary tuberculosis, secondary tuberculosis is the tuberculosis with cavitation. That is a tuberculosis that is uh, localized to the apical areas and it is very fast in its action and its pathology. So, as soon as the pathogen comes in, immediately the body starts responding, type 4 hypersensitivity reaction occurs and the result of that is that granulomas that are formed, they would and the tissue necrosis that happens that tissue necrosis, so let us say this represents tissue necrosis without any granuloma just because the hypersensitivity reaction occurred. That opens up into the airways and so secondary tuberculosis is more common to create abscesses. So, when it opens up in the airways, what would happen? I am going to make what happens over here. So, let us say this is an abscess that has become opened. So, what will happen is that as some of the material is leaked out in the airway, of course, the, it, this thing was filled, it was a necrosis tissue, it was a granuloma or caseous area and now it has gotten some material ejected, that means the remaining material is less. And this is when you see on the x-ray, this would appear as air fluid level. So, a patient whose x-ray shows you an air fluid level, you should suspect, you should know that that patient has some sort of a cavity somewhere which has now drained. Now, where has it drained? One possibility is the airway as we are seeing here. Another possibility is that if I put the lung tissue here, the other possibility is that the this is the pleura. So, of course, we know that pleura has two layers. The one that I am drawing right now is the visceral pleura. The outside layer is the parietal pleura. So, there is possibility that the cavity actually, the abscess actually opens up on the pleural side. On the pleural side. So, that would cause, that would cause pneumothorax, that is one. And secondly, empyema, that is the infection going into the pleural cavity. So, empyema or pneumothorax and or pneumothorax would occur. Right? So, this is very common with the secondary tuberculosis. You say why not it is common with the primary tuberculosis? Because in the case of primary tuberculosis, necrosis does not occur that fast because of granuloma formation which then becomes caseated and organized. But in the secondary tuberculosis, there is an immediate hypersensitivity reaction that causes this. Okay? So, ejected material, either the tumor fragment, so let us say this tumor, if fragment from here became ejected in the airway. This is that fragment and the rest of the empty area became an abscess or infections, infectious area either by the tuberculosis or by fungi or by other necrosed tissue which became necrosed with the let us say stomach 
gastric uh, you know acids that have been uh, aspirated. So, that ejection can cause air fluid level. Okay. And then is the septic embolism. So, this is also possible that the sepsis or the, the systemic infection can cause embolism here. That embolism can then cause obstruction. So, let us say here is a blood vessel, here is an artery. You remember arteries go with the pathways, airways. So, let us say this is an artery and this artery got an embolus stuck in it. So, when the embolus got stuck, the area distal to that supplied by that artery, this area all became dead, mostly becomes dead. So, when that becomes dead, this necrosis tissue will ultimately be, be removed, resolved. So, macrophages will come here and they will take the debris out and this area when that becomes resolved, it will become an empty area and this would become a cavity. So, that is the embolism and finally, the hematogenic dissemination. So, it is not necessary that just the heart sends an embolism and that would be most common in the addicts who are using who are using syringes and who are using um, each other's um, needles and that can bring in staph aureus that can cause the infection of the heart and that can cause embolism as well. Other one is just the hematogenic embolism in which there may be emboli coming from the lower limb and these would then get lodged in the lung and cause necrosis and then that necrosed area will become an abscess. So, these are the causes of the abscess. Now, how does an abscess look like? So, look abscess is usually it is an ejected area right it is an emptied area. So, there was a necrosis before. So, how would it look like an empty piece irregular space then that has fibrous material around it. Why there is fibrous material because this was actually some sort of a tissue that was undergoing inflammation. So, part of the inflammation is fibrosis and then on the side of that are going to be lots of lymphocytes right and lots of histiocytes. So, these should be pink in color or epithelioid cells actually pink colored spindle shaped epithelial looking cells pink looking cells these will be present. Then there will be lots of giant cells that will be present giant cells have multinucleated structures these are actually fused histiocytes and macrophages. So, that is the, the structure that you would see for a abscess inside the cavity is now empty and it is filled with fluids or blood and that is what we have for the abscesses structure. Now, progression what happens to the abscess we just talked about it one it can be ejected. Now, when it ejects in the airways what is the danger there? The danger is if it is an infection the patient's sputum just became very very infective. This is what is important for secondary tuberculosis. Secondary tuberculosis would cause lot of empty areas and the infection because the infective and necrose tissue is now coming out in the sputum there is this patient's sputum is very very infective and dangerous. Rupture in the pleura we talked about it and embolism. Now, this is also possible that these these fragments from necrose tissue and, and the infected tissue gets lodged into the blood vessel into the veins and from there they go back to the left heart and from the left heart they go to the to the uh, brain and cause meningitis and embolism and strokes in the head. So, that is also a possibility. Now, clinically a patient who has some sort of a abscess what would that patient present with? So, of course, the patient would present with number one cuff. This patient's cuff may be accompanied by copious meaning a lot of volume smelly and and uh, sanguous red in color and sometimes even hemoptysis will be present. So, that is a cuff this patient would come with hemoptysis this patient would come with then he would have or she would have fever which spikes often weight loss will be present anemia because of bleeding anemia may be present 
and of course whatever is the underlying cause the symptoms related to that cause will also be present if it is a bacterial infection then the symptoms to that if it is mycobacterium tuberculosis then low grade fever and chills and and stuff like that with the weight loss that will be present so there will be some specific uh, presentations too now how do you treat an abscess of course you give antibiotics that is the first thing but if an abscess is not managed by antibiotics then surgical removal or drainage of the abscess may be needed thank you